Sample size calculation for two-arm superiority and non-inferiority clinical trials. Once upon a time, in the ancient land of Babylon, there was a king named Nebuchadnezzar. This king had a rather peculiar idea, he thought a diet of only meat and wine would keep his people in tip-top shape. However, a group of young men of royal blood had a different idea. They believed that vegetables were the way to go. After some convincing, the king allowed them to follow their veggie regimen for a while. Lo and behold, by the end of the study, the vegetable-loving lads looked healthier than their meat-eating friends. The king was astonished and declared, let them eat? Legumes. This was one of the earliest recorded examples of a clinical trial. Fast forward to modern times, we have a more systematic approach to clinical trials, but the basic principle remains the same, comparing different treatments to see which one works better. But we cannot talk about treatment effect without talking about sample size. If our study hypothesis were a spaceship, then the sample size is the fuel. If we don't have enough fuel, our spaceship can't take off or may crash back to Earth after taking off, and we may wrongly conclude we were never meant to reach the stars. Whereas the problem wasn't with our spaceship, but the fact that we had no fuel. In the same vein, if our study is not adequately powered, we may end up concluding there is nothing interesting happening as far as differences between the treatment groups, whereas the issue was not with the hypothesis but with insufficient sample size. We call this a type 2 statistical error. To be able to calculate sample sizes for clinical trials, we must first know the different types of clinical trials that exist. Let's zoom in on two important types, superiority and non-inferiority trials. Superiority trials aim to show that one intervention is, as the name implies, superior to another. Think of it as saying, my rocket is way faster than your rocket. Non-inferiority trials aim to show that an intervention is not significantly worse than another. It's like saying, my rocket might not be faster, but it's just as good and offers other benefits, such as being cheaper and emitting less greenhouse gases. The claim of superiority is an extraordinary claim, and as the saying goes, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Even if we think that a treatment is superior to another, we can't just test that narrative only. We need to look at both sides of the picture carefully. For this reason, superiority trials involve a two-sided hypothesis test, requiring a larger sample size compared to non-inferiority trials, which only look specifically in one direction and use a one-sided test. It should be intuitive that a two-sided test will typically require a larger sample size than a one-sided test. Think of it like crossing a street. A two-sided test is like crossing a two-way street. Traffic can come from both directions, so you need to look left and right. Just as looking both ways takes extra time, a two-sided test requires a larger sample size to detect an effect in either direction accurately. On the other hand, a one-sided test is like crossing a one-way street. You only need to look in one direction. Now let's apply these concepts to a case study where we have invented a new medication for weight loss called Novempic, and we are comparing it to Ozempic, which we are considering as the standard of care. Let's first calculate the sample size for a superiority trial where our null hypothesis is that there is no difference in weight loss between the two drugs and our alternative hypothesis is that Novempic, the new drug, is in fact better than Ozempic, the standard of care. Our categorical outcome is the proportion of patients who achieve a weight loss of at least 5% of their body weight. Now that we fully understand these concepts, let's head over to the Chi-Squares platform to perform our sample size calculations. Once we've logged into the platform, we head over to the sample size page and choose our study type as comparative study with two arms. We'll choose percentage as outcome. First, we need to specify the expected proportion of success, that is, the percentage of patients achieving the 5% weight loss for both Ozempic and Novempic. Let's assume that based on previous studies, approximately 40% of patients taking Ozempic achieve at least a 5% weight reduction over six months. We hypothesize that Novempic will have a higher success rate. For instance, we expect 55% of patients on Novempic to achieve the same weight loss benchmark. We set a 95% confidence level and select a two-tailed test because we don't want to make any assumptions about the direction of the effect. Next, we provide a power of 80% to ensure we can detect differences if they exist. Since we want about the same number of people in both exposure groups, we enter one for the allocation ratio. We expect a 10% dropout rate, so we put in a response rate of 90%. The app tells us we need 194 participants per group, totaling 388 participants for the study overall. You can click on Show Reference 
to view the formula and citations for your work. Now let's move on to calculating the sample size for a non-inferiority trial and explore how it differs from a superiority trial. This time, our null and alternative hypotheses are very different. Our null hypothesis is that the new treatment, Novempic, is inferior to the standard treatment, Ozempic, by more than the predefined non-inferiority margin. Our alternative hypothesis is that the new treatment, Novempic, is not inferior to the standard treatment, Ozempic, by more than the predefined non-inferiority margin. To start, we select the option to calculate a new sample size and choose the non-inferiority trial type. Just like before, we'll enter the prevalence of the outcome in our control group, which represents the standard of care, the currently accepted and widely used treatment. In our example, this standard treatment is Ozempe. Next, we input the level of confidence, power, and response rate, just as we did for the superiority trial. However, one key difference is that there is no need to choose between a one-tailed or two-tailed calculation because non-inferiority trials are always one-tailed. Then, we enter the prevalence difference, which defines the zone of non-inferiority. This zone represents the maximum difference in effectiveness that we're willing to accept while still considering the new treatment, Novempic, to be just as effective as the standard treatment, Ozempic. If the new treatment's efficacy falls within this zone, it's deemed non-inferior to the existing standard. You might wonder, how do we determine this zone of non-inferiority? There are various approaches. Sometimes, experts set the margin based on their experience and judgment. Other times, we refer to the results from the original study of the standard treatment and use the lowest value within its confidence interval as a benchmark. For instance, if the standard treatment's outcome had a prevalence of 40% with a confidence interval ranging from 23% to 57%, then the zone of non-inferiority would be the difference between 40% and 23%, resulting in a margin of 17%. The app now tells us we need 115 participants per group, totaling 230 participants for the study overall. You can click on Show Reference to view the formula and citations for your work. Congratulations! You can now calculate sample sizes for both superiority and non-inferiority clinical trials using the Chi-Squares platform.